Last week, Plus TV's Rise and Shine guest was Jamaican pastor and social activist, Reverend Al Miller. Miller discussed the global homosexual agenda, citing the same methods and tactics being used in Belize as also being used throughout the wider Caribbean community. While Unibam has gone on record to say that it is not an internationally orchestrated move to push the homosexual agenda and is only their personal little struggle in Belize, Reverend Miller, who is a leader of a mega church in Jamaica and at the forefront of national issues in the Caribbean island, maintains that it is a systematic, organized, structured move to eventually legalize gay marriage. It is not a today's issue. It's an issue that's been orchestrated about at least 40, 30, 5, 40 years ago. Some folks sat together and said, hey, we're pushing this agenda. So it's been a systematic, organized, structured move around the world. And the pattern in nations have been the same. What we see happening to us in Jamaica, in the Caribbean, and you here in Belize, it's the same pattern that has happened consistently from South Africa, Canada, or all of Europe, it's been the same thing. Reverend Miller, for most of his presentation, compared events occurring in both countries in an attempt to demonstrate that there is, in fact, a pro-homosexual agenda. He began with the financial backing of the agenda and the pre pre prerogative, sorry, and the prerogative of large nations, that should be prerogative, of large nations to threaten to withhold aid from smaller countries, should they not jump on board. So in Jamaica, they have done the same thing. And it is big money that is behind it, money. without question. Right. Big money that is being spent around the world because we can question where these funds come from. I mean, we can speculate. But huge sums of money. And when you notice now that our governments are under pressure because it is part of the international agenda, because it has the big backing of the money people in the world. And so you find, we heard, I don't know if you, you recall in England, the British Prime Minister had made the statement and um, Obama made a similar statement mm -hmm. that they were just on the verge in some cases of wanting to tie aid to, 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 the, to the homosexual agenda. In other words, that if we do not accept it as an alternate lifestyle, then you would not you, you run the risk of not getting aid, and it has been said more clearly from some European nations mm -hmm. than it is from, uh, from, from the U.S., but it is implied strongly. You may remember in 2011, an HFLE manual was discovered in the schools across the country of Belize, but the wording and content of the document quickly caught the eye of the church and other concerned citizens, and after a tug and war with the government, the document was removed. Well, Reverend Miller says that sounds familiar, as they experienced the same situation in Jamaica. He followed on with discussing the AIDS Commission, an organization he claims has been hijacked and is being used to push acceptance of LGBT lifestyles. When it was presented, we, their teachers objected, and when they, of course, right away, when they left this conference, they brought some brought it to me and said this is the thing we said uh-huh <laughs> and so we immediately we blasted it. it and the minister of education then says oh they didn't realize that that was in it and that was not the intent and you hear all kind of foolish argument the aids agenda throughout the world unfortunately has been hijacked by the gay agenda so that the people who are pushing the hiv issue unfortunately are tainted on that side and consequently it prohibits the church from embracing it not the hiv issue because as far as i'm concerned we should be championing cause those kind of causes anything for the best welfare to be must champion it but we can't but it's difficult for the church to embrace when the leadership of it is the very thing against which we are speaking then the topic shifted to human rights in an attempt to dissuade gay rights activists from contesting that their rights are being infringed upon, Jamaica in 2011 completed the Charter of Rights, 
which made certain that the fundamental rights of all minority groups are protected. The Reverend expounded on this and also spoke on a lawsuit brought against the Jamaican government, eerily similar to the case of Caleb Orozco versus the Attorney General. And the Charter of Rights was careful to ensure that all minority groups, that their rights are, pro are protected. So there is no violation right. of anybody's right. rights on the basis right. at all. But so the issue is not about rights. And the Belizean people understand the issue is not about rights. The issue is about acceptance of a lifestyle. In Jamaica now for the first time, Last year, this, uh, uh, some, again, I won't call, just avoid the no name, problem, the same principle where there's a lawsuit in the Supreme Court now about challenging, challenging that the same language used, that my rights are likely to be violated because of this law. Reverend Miller says that another tactic is to redefine certain terms, case in point, gender. In Belize, the revised gender policy 2013, the term gender is read and we quote, the social constructed roles allocated respectively to women and men in particular societies and in particular historical and cultural contexts. Such roles and the differences between them are conditioned by a variety of political, economic, ideological and cultural factors and are characterized in most societies by unequal power relations, end quote. After addressing that matter, the Reverend offered some encouraging words to the government of Belize and its people, saying that they do not have to bend to the pressure of the homosexual agenda. Argument, same language, same wording. That we now heavily, gender issues is connected to sexual orientation, they, they, you know, we could just put, throwing it all in the same pile, using the same terminologies because there is a common end to be achieved. A lot of it, it is international pressure, but we must not feel we have to bow to it because what we do here is that this argument that they are pushing for us, it cannot be taken to Asia. It cannot be taken to the Muslim nations. So therefore, we must not believe that we have no choice, as many of our political leaders are trying to say. There are some African countries who have come out straight and says, look, we are not going. I think it is the new prime minister of um, Nigeria is one of them. Yeah, and um, one of the other countries, they just became a new, a new okay, prime minister yes. too, where he says, we are a Christian nation. We are not into that we do not moving our nation that way case closed, closed.